65. Explain why addition of NH3 or HNO3 to a saturated solution of CuOH2 in contact with solid CuOH2 increases the solubility of the solid. Okay, so basically we just have to answer the question, why when we add NH3 or HNO3 does the solubility increase of CuOH2? Now just know that when they're saying that you know we're increasing the solubility, that's just a fancy way for saying that we are producing more of the ions. So we see more ions in the solution. So the more charged, uh, you know, components. So the, the cation and the anion. So we just are forming more ions in the solution. Well, if we're talking about ions, right, let's just figure out which ones those are. Those come from the breakdown of the solid. And the solid they told us was copper hydroxide, CuOH2, right? Copper 2 hydroxide. So we have CuOH2, that's a solid, and this will dissociate, right? Double arrow because we're talking about solubility and equilibrium into its two ions. So that has to be the copper and the hydroxide. The charges here, you can use your subscripts to figure out what the charges are. You can crisscross these numbers back up. So the one crisscrosses up telling me that the OH is a negative one charge, and the two crisscrosses up telling me that the copper was a plus two. If we wanted to balance this, we would put a two in the front, and these are the two ions that they're talking about. Now, if we're producing more ions in solution, that means that in terms of these two reactions, right, whether we're going in the forward direction or in the reverse direction, the forward direction which is this direction, is more favorable. Because we're increasing the solubility, we're producing more of the ions, the ions are on the product side, so we're going to the right. Now this is all talking about in terms of Le Chatelier's principle, right? Le Chatelier and all those principles, I think we went over those in chapter nine. I think it was the gases chapter or the pressure chapter. Le Chatelier's, I think this is how you spell it is basically, depending on what you do with your ions, you will, you know, favor one side of the equation over the other, meaning going forward or going in the reverse direction. So the thing is, is that why when we add these two, you know, compounds? Well, let's look at the ammonia, right? When we add ammonia to this reaction, something is going to want to react with it. And NH3 can act as a ligand, which means that it will react with a metal, and it's always the metal ion. So in this case, it would be the copper 2 plus. And when a metal and a ligand come together, they form a complex ion. So a complex ion will be formed from the reaction between copper and the ammonia. In this case, the complex ion is going to be the copper NH3, and there's going to be four NH3s that react, close the parenthesis, and the copper was a plus two charge, so that's now the charge that's sharing between the complex ion. If we wanted to balance this, we would put a four in here. Now, how did I know that this was the balanced equation, right? How did I know that there was four ammonias that were being um, bound? Well, this comes from knowing your complex ion equations and the KFs. With copper, generally they only talk about one complex ion with ammonia, and that's always with four NH3s. So if now we have two reactions going on here, that means that some of the copper that was being dissociated from the CuOH2, that's now going over here. And if I'm going to a new equation, that means that I have less for this equation and more over here. So in this equation, the copper 2 plus is decreasing. And remember, according to Le Chatelier's principle, that means if we decrease a certain amount of a, a molarity of some you know, component of the balanced equation, we will shift towards that side because we have to get it back. So that's one explanation, right? It's because you're made a new formula, which dropped the copper, so we have to get it back, and that increases the solubility. The same thing goes with the HNO3. Now remember, HNO3 
is a strong acid. It's one of your six strong acids. So strong acids always break down 100% of the time into H plus and in this case, NO3 minus. Now out of these two, which is going to react with the negative component? We already got the positive component covered. That's with this equation. And if it's a negative hydroxide, opposites attract, the negative will want to react with the positive H plus. And if I have H plus plus OH minus, I will form, or maybe I'll do my, my equilibrium, I will form water. And the same idea goes here. If now this OH minus is reacting with the H plus, it's not going to be in this reaction anymore. Some of it's going to be taken to use for the new reaction. So also the hydroxide ion will decrease. And because you have a drop, you have to get it back. So you will favor that side. So it all comes back to Le Chatelier's principle of, you know, equal, you know, going back to equilibrium. It's all because you have new equations here that basically remove your ions from the original equation. So you have to make more. And that's why this will break down more and will become more soluble. And there you go. I really hope this helps. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. And I hope to be talking to you in later lessons. Okay. Bye-bye.